Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We've talked about this before, and that is finding your purpose, your true purpose, what you should be doing in life in terms of your career, your job, what really fulfills you. We're going to pivot a little bit and take a look at it from an employer standpoint. The people that you have working with you, are they doing what they really should be doing? You know, their true purpose. And that's something that's going to help us all, your employees, the employer. And she is somebody that has offered lots of career strategies. She's a career coach and she'll help you find your purpose. And she's here back with us, Joanne Pariah, back on the program. Joanne, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm and Thank good. you for having me. Hey, it's great to have you back here. And this is something I think is so, so key for a lot of companies where you could have a a great employee and they're doing a good job, but there may be something in them that you could turn a little bit in terms of their responsibility and then have them do maybe more of this over here, which would be more in line with what's in them. And then they do an even better job and they feel fulfilled. You feel like you're getting your, your worth out of your employee. Um, it's just discovering how to do that. How do you find those things in those employees? That's what we're talking about. Well, absolutely. And it's also not taking the job to help them, but it's also helping to train them. So you take it from the two different sides. But basically, we're doing the same thing as if someone came to me and said, I need to find my purpose. So you would be giving to your employees, and it's not odd. I mean, there are many exams that even... Previous to getting a job or when you get a job, let's say in the financial industry, they give you some really heavy duty questionnaires. Mm. And what you do is you then say, okay, well, let's do the self-directed search. It's a little easier than the purpose cards. So I would you know, do it a little bit differently. Although if you've got a fun group, you may want to do the purpose cards first. And you're taking it from the standpoint of do they really have the talents and gifts in their personality for this particular job. So that then what happens is if you've got a group of, you know, real estate agents, or let's even go down to technology people, do they have those skills necessary or the talents? Okay. Because that's really, again, the whole point of all of this is we're in such a negative world and we feel better when we're doing what we love mm -hmm. and we give it away. It, it was so interesting. Um, I just did something last week with somebody with a, uh, with a client and she was like, well, I'm really good at this. And I go, but do you like it? That's what the whole point is. Mm -hmm. Because again, you could be good at something that you love, that you don't love to do, excuse me, or you could be kind of, crappy at something that you love to do because then that helps you with yourself but uh, taking it from reverse engineering it and taking it from the corporate standpoint yep. where corporations businesses want to enhance their employees because we are turning into a very employee centric world because of covid you then as a business want to make sure so you kind of have them take the self-directed test, and you can find out from the self-directed search what qualities this type of person, this job needs. I mean, you can just go in there. It's it's incredible, the information that's there. And you can even also do it on the ONET. But it then will tell you, oh, well, I have an accounting clerk here. Do they have the real personality for this? Or maybe they're more social and maybe I need to put them in a sales position. So I'm reverse engineering it by saying businesses can do this in order to help their business and in order to help their employees. Do you feel because of COVID and that it's, it's, it's a more employee centered environment now, people working remote, that it truly is time for, for companies to now let me take a look at what everybody's doing here absolutely i mean especially in the new york metro area 
because what has happened, or let's even just start from my own history, way, way, way back when, when I was a software developer, I, because the company had, was desperate in hiring tech people in the early 80s, they offered a four-day work week condensed hours. Sorry to say that ruined me forever. Okay. Mm. No commuting five days a week. That is a very important piece of our lifestyle, especially in the New York, in any city area. Sure. Commuting is stressful. So people now have found, oh my goodness, I'm not commuting. I feel better. I have more time with my kids. There's more of a work-life balance. And I am so for all of this. You know, but yes, again, you can have a uh, waiter working remotely, you know. Right. But you know what? It's also, you know, from a, the employee standpoint or the employer standpoint, I friends with somebody for many years, haven't talked to him in a long time, but he worked for this company. Uh, it was it was in the New York area, a uh, big tech company, and it was basically remote. I mean, I'm talking years ago. It was I did remote. that too. Right. Uh, and he would always say, you know, it's great. Yeah, I go in there and and the commute to the job was maybe maybe 12 minutes. It wasn't like it was, it, it was nothing. But he would always say, yeah, yeah, I just kind of fly under the radar. I kind of fly under the radar. And like, there might be two trips out of the year he'd have to take. And they were just fun trips anyway. Um, but that makes me wonder with the way things are now that. Are a lot of employers getting what they should be getting from their employees? And I don't mean in terms of just productivity. There's other things in those employees that they could be doing. And I'm not saying stack on more hours or anything like that, but just a a, a better match, a better mo- match for the company and the employee. Absolutely. And 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 that's why you it's so important to really know what are their personality traits. I did have a, a colleague who um helps college, um, high school students write essays. That's another story. Um, And they were like, oh, well, is this Myers-Briggs? And I'm like, no, it isn't. It is very different and it really helps. And it will help the employer to know, okay, here's the other thing. You have to have a certain personality trait to like remote work. Now, what I'm finding Mm -hmm. is it is generational and it is... um, it is, it is, oh, how do I put this? It is career type or industry. Sorry, that's the right word. Industry, because many people in technology are the ones that can work remotely and have had that inside of them. I mean, I was working remotely in the 70s in a law firm when they wanted certain briefs to be completed. I said, I can't do it at the office. Can I take it home? And Mm. but I have that type of personality that can sit down and get it done. That's another part of your personality. Can you really focus on something? And we're also in this generation of where nobody's focusing. I mean, the statistics on what we focus on 30 years ago is very different than what the stats are now. And it's the same thing when we talk about the employees and could be generational that work remote takes a certain type of discipline i know it sounds ridiculous no but absolutely I, I, I if i was working remote and i i work in my own environment you know i leave my house uh this is my office you know i'm in an office building i have a studio i have offices maybe i'm working remote i don't even, you could say that if well, i you was could. you could i guess i'm because i'm not in an i'm not going to a specific job where there's other people and everything uh just because that's the way it is Um, And that's all good. But if I was doing it from home, I don't know if I could have the discipline to to make sure that I apply myself because I'd be I'd be walking away. "Ah, You know what? Let me go for a walk. Let me go for a jog. I'll get back to work a little bit later. I don't know if I could do it. That's just me. You never say never. Never say never. But that is your personality type. I mean, I was able to work remotely from day one. And that was and that's my personality type. I want to get it done. And then I did work remotely when my kids were little and that was in the Mm nineties. And um, so what would happen though, is that they were babies, you know, they were little, 
They were under the age of five. And so, yes, I had the babysitter take care of them while I was doing my work or because I had them on a schedule, 730, I then could do my work. And then I went into the office two days a week and worked one day a week from home. Gotcha. That was in the 90s. Wow. Yeah. So I have that. Di again, it's a personality trait. However, I think the, it's generational because now, I mean, come on, what is, what are all these, what is everybody doing? They're like this. So it is, I think, generational also, but it is what discipline do you have? Um, I know, again, generational, I want to talk to the person. I want to see the person face to face. And for me, we were doing teleconferencing in the 80s. Okay. So we were able to do face-to-face -face with a group of people because, again, our technology departments always had the technology before it was rolled out. Yep. So, again, how we do need human contact. I'm not saying everybody should be working remotely. I am not saying that we should be in this little cocoon. But you're right. Do you have the personality to sit there and say, like me, I, I get distracted. Start talking to me about something else. However, I do know I have to get something done. Yep. Yep. You have goals. You have plans, right. you know, right. and, 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 and you stick to them. So when it, it comes to employees, companies, employee, yeah, employers and companies, how I, how can they better define what their employees should be doing? I know that you have uh, what we call the purpose cards. We've talked about them before. Does it come down to that? Do Should an employer work with you in that capacity? And should it be more of a one-on-one? -on -one? Here's It can be both, okay? And the purpose cards, really what companies should be doing if, to work with me is I would prefer for them to get the self-directed search because that then goes into the detail. That then goes into the detail of what a person should be doing on the high level. So maybe you're asking somebody to do something that really isn't part of their job. So you need to redefine the job. I mm. find this information so helpful. I just don't know how corporate America will take it because it it can change things a lot. And we need change because look what's going on with AI. Look at chat GPT. It's, it is changing us. So we need to change. Yeah. So I, 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 the purpose cards would be more of like, okay, you want to have fun with your staff. Let's do an event. But the self-directed search is really, let's have fun again, but let's delve deeper. You know, they may be afraid that, oh, wait, I've got this great employee. They do the self-directed search. They're going to find out that, oh, my, I shouldn't be doing this. Because in all honesty, had I done it when I was a project manager and software oh. developer and, and that, I would have gone, oh, I should make a career change. Self-directed search. I know we've talked about it, but for everybody, maybe they're just checking us out for the first time uh, to find that. Just Google self-directed search and it'll come up. Okay. And it'll and and it'll come up like I include it. It it does cost money. Um, I include and it's okay. inexpensive, but you need help with it and you need to know how to navigate it. And a lot of people how to interpret it too, yeah. right? And how to interpret it. But you could do it on your own. There's also one for for high school students, so that they can try and figure out what major they want to take when they're in college. So, it, yes, it, it is unnerving because now you're bringing back memories, Joanne, of a job I was at. And this is in the last 10 years or so where they kind of redefined responsibilities, not major. But, you know, look at that. I'm like, hey, I, I don't I never signed up for that. And and some of it was uh, not during the work week. It was an occasional be go to this event or you need to represent us here, you know, after hours. And I was fine with it, you know, team player and everything, but it was like, you know, we, we didn't, we never talked about that. <laughs> and, well, and you can't say no, you know, but that's also the whole, what does that bring us back to communication? Mm. You know, it brings us back. Well, that wasn't in my original job description, but maybe you want it to be. And if they're going to do something like that, again, they should be communicating with you. They shouldn't just say, oh, well, now I want you to do this. 
Um, yeah. Some people, and an instance is I have a friend whose daughter got a new job and very high end, but then they asked her to do some like event planning, which really the secretary should do. But apparently the boss didn't feel comfortable with the secretary doing it. So when you're at a new job, do you say, uh, uh, this isn't in my job description? Again, that's a whole, yeah. you know, ball of wax that you have to, you have to feel within yourself. You know, do you feel that a job is being unfair? It was really interesting. I saw an article and I didn't read it because, again, I'm from the technology industry mm -hmm. and the technology industry. Before I left it in the early to, you know, like in 2012, when they would put out a job description and still today they want God. And I'm kind of like, really? So what is this real job description? Which then leads me back to, again, it's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. And mm -hmm. so it's networking to really get that, you know, get that feel. But everybody's got to be clear. And that sometimes it all yeah. does get cloudy. And then it's also what you, how you feel, how you are. Um, again, you know, the, it, it all then goes back to the psychology of life and what tools do you need? To really, let's say, I was at a law firm and I was so tired, I was hired as the receptionist. They then started piling documents on me. This is in the 70s, and this law firm actually offered me a job as a lawyer. And basically, what ended up happening is I'm like, I can't answer the phones. I can't do this work. I can't do that one. We need a receptionist. I got my guts up and I said, I'm going to quit. I was ready to go in and say, so and so, we need, may he rest in peace, we need a receptionist. And I was ready to go. And if we don't get one, I quit. I didn't even get that far. I got to, we need a receptionist, hire one. So we all, that's a whole different ball game of showing how to navigate, which I actually helped a client navigate a corporate America type of situation. It's, it's, it's key, especially when you're taking a, a new position where things may not be defined. And my, my mother always used to say that it's the deal you make in the beginning. That's right. And and she also used to say, if you let them do it, they will. And oh, it's true. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, you know, and what's so interesting is I had learned my own, you know, my own career tra trajectory, excuse me, was Based upon that, I, I found a personality trait I have. You know, life is, if history repeats itself, okay, we're not learning from it. And we're also doing the same thing. You know, what's the definition of insanity? And base is doing something over and over again and expecting a different result. So basically, you have to then say, well, what am I doing? If I'm caught in a career path that I'm blocked, what is it that I'm doing? I was always getting more work. And as your mom says, it's like, don't say yes to everything. But I would get bored. I would have hmm. to somewhat, okay, they gave me all this work to do. Well, I did it all. I'm done. And now I'm twiddling my thumbs. And in those days, there was no internet to surf. There was, <laughs> so I wanted more work. So what would happen is I would be overworked. And then I found out, oh, and it would take places, three people to replace me. And then I realized this was all me. And it was all me yeah. because I was taking on everything. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of us do that because we're wired to be people pleasers. Yes, so we are. you just want to keep going to show your value, your value. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to take all my vacation time. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave a couple of days but left. Just... But believe me, there are a lot out there that won't. There yeah. are a lot out there that, you know, the old adage of, wow, that guy got a raise because he's here till nine o'clock at night, except I have the same job as him and I get it all done in nine to five. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, there's so much that you have to understand and and it's about yourself it's about the company you work for it's about the job that you get and you have to not be afraid to speak up for yourself when you work with yourself. with people let's say somebody's looking for a job they're entering the job market they're looking to make a change whatever it might be can you help them with 
the job search, the resume preparation to make sure things are on point. Is that something that you offer? I do. I don't do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But yes, I do. We repurpose your resume. I help people repurpose their resumes for that. If they want to go a different place, but they also have to know what different place are they going? How can I change a certain statement and make it fit to this new arena I'm going to, which is all is, which is, you know, it, which I, is very easy. It, more and more that I, I hear that if you're going to apply for a job, you need to tailor your resume for every job specifically, That's not right. just, not you know just, re- it, here it is. I did it. It's great. It's fantastic. Well, you, know why? you know why? No one's looking at your resume right now. It's a program. And the program That's where I was going with that. picks out the keywords. keywords. Yeah. This is why I have like a hard, when I was looking for a job, they were even doing it then 10, 15 years ago. I, you have to put your resume to that job because that just is what it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it, kind it's of so scary. True. It is kind of scary. Because, and, and especially you could have the best looking resume in terms of the presentation formatted nice you have nice fonts on there maybe included i'm not saying you should or shouldn't maybe a headshot whatever right. it doesn't matter because the programs strip it down to a text file dot that's right. txt that's right. and even though right. you might have had subcategories of of your responsibilities with a check mark and a check mark and it looks fab, and it looks that resume looks great the program doesn't see any of that it's just yeah. looking for certain words that's right. It's look at just like Google, <laughs> just like they're looking for those certain words. And that's that's the scary part. I'm not I'm sort of out of that whole thing. Mm. But that's what you have to do. You have to look at the job description and then tailor your resume to that job description. I, but, I don't want to sound old here, but it really is a shame. Oh, yeah. I don't. I, I think it's terrible. I, I personally don't know where we're going to be going with the workforce because we also have people that, I mean, and that started a long time ago where parents call HR for their child, um, yeah. where everyone's like, well, I want to get to my yoga class. We're very different. It's a different world, but we have to adjust to it. Unfortunately, I, I, I think it's sad. I totally I get that if it's a big, big corporation and you're getting hundreds, thousands of of resumes all right, so maybe you need some help there in terms of a program. Okay, I'll give you that. But some of the smaller companies, just it, it, you feel it. You know, when you're going through resumes, it, and yes, it takes time, but I think that's how you find quality. You know, well, and- I, I, I'll be, I'll give you, I think small companies, like, okay, one of my small companies, um, we put out ads and we look at them. I mean, because it's a small company and gotcha. that's how we handle it. So yeah. it does happen with your smaller businesses, but once you start getting, I think past 50 employees, um, you're not, you need a, a, a tool, but everybody lies on the tool. <laughs> well, then, yes. You so can put maybe, whatever. You're right. You're right. It, and maybe this is why we're happy. You know, what's the quotes these days? Oh, we can't find good help. Well, uh, maybe the approach isn't the proper approach. That is funny because the um, these programs and I can't think it's a three letter acronym for the program ACT or SA. I, I can't remember. I what forgot it, it. I forgot. Yeah, it. I just heard it yesterday. I can't remember it. Oh wow! But, no, but, I've known it for a while, and it's yeah. Well, it's you crazy. know, the one thing it's not is a lie detector, <laughs> so it can't exactly. it can't spot that. That's you right. you offer people some great stuff in terms of coaching them strategy finding their purpose and not just for individuals. We are talking about companies and corporations as well to find you. It's, it's your website, which yes. is your name, right? Is my name. Should yep. I spell it? Do please, I to... please do. Please do. Okay. It's J O A N N P E R A H I A.com. And technically if you're in the local area, if you go career coach in, in near me, I come up. Gotcha. And we're talking the uh, the New York area, but certainly anywhere. Uh, anywhere. We can yep. do this anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, Joanne, always great talking with you. Yeah, same great here. Great insight. Yeah. It's like, uh, I feel like I'm plugged in when I talk to you. I know. it's gr- <laughs> It really is great. Um, uh, 
And I look oh. forward to uh, next time we get a chance to, uh, to get together. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.